Uh, we'll keep this moving sport uh, forward in a sport that is predominantly black. There is only one black head coach, and that is Mike Tomlin. The Rooney rule is currently failing us. Four of the open NFL head coaching jobs this offseason have been filled, none by minority coaches with four jobs remaining. Aside from Josh McDaniels, none of the coaches hired so far have previous head coaching experience. Let me repeat that. None of them have head coaching experience. On that note, the ESPN family has just received an upgrade, and that would be Angela Rye. Congratulations. Welcome Good to the morning. ESPN hey, hey, family. Hey. Good morning. Um, Good to see you. She'll be with us. Excellent to have you, and the network needs your voice, so it's yes, great sir. to have you, especially here today on this issue. Angela, I'll start with you. How will this lawsuit impact black coaches? Well, I want to start with how it will impact the whole of America, not even just black America. The fact sure. that this lawsuit was filed on the first day of Black History Month and um, the fact that he went ahead courageously and said, I'm going to speak up for me. Uh, this morning when he was on air, he talked about speaking up for his kids. Um, this was a courageous lawsuit where he calls on the ancestors in point one of the complaint. He talks about Martin Luther King. There's a quote from Martin Luther King at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Harriet Tubman, Rosa Parks, Frederick Douglass, Jackie Robinson, and Mamie Till. And we all know the historic nature of this year um, for Jackie Robinson. The fact that the NFL is struggling to integrate everywhere else besides on stages during the halftime show. And if you're not running the ball down the field, that is highly problematic. We're in 2022 where we've broken all types of barriers in this country. And we are talking about a rule that has failed to fulfill the needs of black coaches, coordinators, executives, GMs. It's failing. And at some point they have to decide whether they're going to um, continue to engage in window dressing mm -hmm. or if they're going to ensure that this rule actually has real implications and impact. The biggest problem we have is in addi addition to the hiring practices, they're not retaining the coaches. Yes. And they're being let go mm -hmm. at a much stricter standard than anyone else, winning records, and they're still being let go. Absolutely. So I think the other important point, and I want to get to the heart of this lawsuit, is that the, um, it alleges violation of Section 1981 of the Civil Rights Act of 1866. That prohibits racial discrimination in any type of employment contracts. The NFL is going to have a really difficult time with this very damning text from Bill Belichick, um, with all of the evidence that we have, just the data. We don't have to get into the emotions of it. The data is there, and the data is on the side of Coach Flores. If somebody says, Angela, and welcome to the family. Thank you. If somebody says, okay, if you look at the NFL league office, it's relatively diverse. They've got, they've got a lot of diversity within their office. The problem is really not with them. It's with the owners, and the owners are the bosses of the commission. They're the bosses of the commissioner, Roger Goodell. How do you answer that in terms of somebody in the NFL saying, I mean, they're not going to say this publicly, but it's really not us. Mm -hmm. It's the owners. It's not us. The league office has been pushing the Rooney Rule. The league office has been pushing that agenda. We've been about our business in regards to that, but these owners won't comply. If they try to separate themselves from the owners, how is that something that Brian Flores can fight? Well, and this is the thing. One of the things I also commend him on in this lawsuit is he gives recommendations for how the, employ the hiring table should look. Players shouldn't be involved in that. We know, again, 70% of the league's players are black. They shouldn't be involved in the hiring decisions. If the owners are going to refuse accountability from this overall thing called the NFL, that's something where the NFL now has to hold them accountable. Otherwise, they're going to continue to be faced with these kinds of lawsuits. And if the data doesn't shift, they're going to continue to lose them. When you look at Bill Belichick's text messages, mm -hmm. there will be people out there that will say, well, he's just texting a friend. How does that help Brian in his case, even though the names were switched? And most people believe Bill Belichick is dialed into the National Football League. So the information that he receives most likely is accurate. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I think the reality of it is when you look at, they start the, law, the lawsuit with this. Sorry, I effed this up. I double checked and misread the text. I think they are naming Brian Dalvo. I'm sorry about that. Right? This is the last text message mm -hmm. that Brian Flores receives from Coach Belichick. This is all the evidence he really needs to prove this because his interview was three days yeah. after this text message was received. So we don't have to interpret anything. It's in black and white. I think the other thing, Stephen A., going back to your point um, regarding 
the hiring practices, when you look at, he literally has like a Facebook of general managers, of the owners, of coaches in the NFL, and it's Snow White. It's inexcusable. He has that pictures of everyone in this lawsuit. Mm -hmm. It's very well documented, very well done. If they want to demonstrate pattern and practice of racially discriminatory behavior, they have that. Mm -hmm. They have that. Angela, you... real quick, doesn't there need to be transparency in this decision making for there to be progress in the Rooney Rule on why they chose these candidates and making that public for the black coaches, why they're not getting these jobs? Well, they can they can say whatever they want, but the reality of it is, is if these interviews are conducted after they've already made a hiring decision, just like they did with this New York mm -hmm. Giants mm -hmm. issue, it's going to continue to be a problem. The Rooney Rule has to be um, applied in a way Here's what really has to happen. And again, he quotes Dr. King at the beginning of this lawsuit. We're not just shifting rules. We have to shift minds and hearts. And as long as they're interviewing with people who don't believe they're capable, coming to, in the Denver Broncos um, interview, an hour late, yeah. appearing to look like they're dis disheveled and drunk, right? That is a real issue. <laughs> but, but explain to me how that's a real issue because yeah. I was out late last night. I was, my alarm clock didn't work. I came. I had some drinks with some friends. You're not, like, res how do you you're not prove... respecting the interview. No, no, we just talking, how, no, we're just talking yeah. about plausible yeah, deniability how, oh, God, what yeah. somebody could throw out there gonna, in that regard in a Denver Broncos. How are you going to go against that? Because I mean, I'm sure John Elway and his brass are saying, we was out to dinner. We had some drinks. What? We showed up to the interview. Yeah, sure. They showed, they showed, up, to they the showed up to the interview. And you know what? I wasn't there, Keyshawn. But here's what I know. That more often than not, mm -hmm. this is how black coaches are being treated in okay. the interview process. More often than not, this is how offensive and defensive coordinators are being treated in the interview process. More often than not, the NFL has applied the Rooney Rule since 2003, and what do we have to show for it? Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the truth of so it. So essentially, they show up and don't take it serious because it's a black man. They wouldn't do that the same if it was well, a white coach. It, perhaps. And the one thing that we can also say is it appears that there's an explicit bias issue, okay. right, within the league. But we know for sure there's an implicit bias issue. Let me say this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> First of all, let me just give an opinion real quick and just throw it out the way. I'll get into the Giants and the Dolphins quickly in just a second. Denver's a shaky situation because we keep forgetting that before Vic Vangio was the coach, it was a Vance, guy named Vance, Vance Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. It was a black man. Mm -hmm. Don, John Elway and the Denver Broncos organization just had a black coach. They just hired a black head coach before they let him go and brought in Vic Fangio. So that's going to be something that they could throw to their defense. That's number one. Number two, tardiness or whatever the case may be. Plausible deniability. I think that's something that they could get away with. I don't know if you're Stephen Ross telling them to throw games. Offering $100,000, I think that's far more incriminating. The New York Giants and their history of not hiring black head coaches, that's definitely incriminating, particularly when you got the text from Bill Belichick to Brian Flores showing what he was hearing because he's so plugged in. And three days before its interview, I definitely think that's something that's going to work in Brian Flores' favor on those two points. My question to you, Angela Ryan, knowing you the way that I do, mm -hmm. would be this. I want to know... Of all the things that are being said and all the things that Brian Flores says that he wants accomplished from this lawsuit, what's the number one thing you think will happen and what's the number one thing you want to happen? Well, the thing that I think will happen is they're going to have to settle. Just again, off of this text message exchange alone. Like, it's very, very clear. This, that hiring process in particular was thrown. I understand that what you all are saying about the subjectivity around the Denver Broncos. I'll table that, but what I will say is he also has data on his side. One statistic that hasn't been talked about this much this morning is in the 20 years of the Rooney Rule, only 15 black coaches were hired out of 129 vacancies. That's the part. And I know you're talking about Stephen Ross and the incriminating nature of throwing the games. That is a part of this lawsuit. But the major part of this lawsuit that he has to prove is racial discrimin discriminatory intent, right, in an employment contract. They have the data for that. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hoping for is that the NFL comes to terms with the fact that it has some severe racial inequities that have to be addressed. The data shows it. They need to well, admit it. Well, they also it. helped by Troy Vincent, the executive VP of the NFL, being on the record in public, yeah. Washington and Post interviews, in this along too. with being on my show, Stephen A's World, and saying yes. this is a problem. So they've got people within the NFL Absolutely. office saying 
this is an issue. But and I think that's damning to the owners as it pertains to the league office if the executive Angela. VP is saying the league owners got to address this because we're trying. I think that helps the NFL office. Doesn't help the owners. Angela. No, it doesn't help the owners, but it helps what we should all be striving for, which is racial justice right. and equity in this organization. It's triggering as a black woman to hear things like, well, we, one of the statements that came out yesterday was, we, we picked the most qualified person, the New York Giants. Mm -hmm. Why is it that we're always unqualified? This man had a winning record with the Miami Dolphins. Right. That shouldn't even come into question. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they was never been the head coach. Yeah. Yeah, right. they were one and seven, and then turned it around to eight and one. That's never happened in NFL right. history this past season. Last question I have for you, and then Keisha, and jump in here. What if Flores never gets a job in the NFL again? What if it's a similar situation to Colin Kaepernick? How do the players respond to that? You know, I hope that they will um, stand up in solidarity with Brian Flores. He said this morning that no matter what, it's worth it. It was He's thinking about his kids. He's thinking about ancestors who came before him. I applaud his courage. This is a major, major step. It's something that was absolutely needed. Again, he has all of the data. I hope that the players will step up and say this is the right thing. Oh, we'll get yeah, into no, they, players. Yeah, we're we'll get into okay. players today. And, and, I'll deal with that today. Angela, you mentioned lawsuit, mm -hmm. right? Settle. If you settle this lawsuit, how is that moving things forward for what you want to do? Because it's not monetary, right? It's not about money. Right. So how are you settling? What are you settling for? So to be clear, he actually is suing for damages, compensatory and punitive damages. So okay. there is money involved. But with the settlement, what I'm hoping for is that they would acknowledge the wrong behavior that's been documented thoroughly throughout this 58-page lawsuit. And then in addition to that, that they would say, and we're striving to make changes. The hiring committee process that Brian Flores recommends in this lawsuit as a solution is a great one. And I think finally, um, there has to be another system set up for accountability in the NFL. Stephen A has talked about it, um, you know, articulately saying that the NFL is saying we have this right, but the coach, the owners will not cooperate. That's something that has to shift immediately. Otherwise, we're going to be in the same loop for another Just want to make sure, this is because the audience, you brought up Martin Luther King, how it was in the... Uh, you know, you got a statement, you know, a, a, a quote, quote in the top a of quote to start off this, this class action mm -hmm. complaint. The quote from Dr. Martin Luther King, just so everybody knows, yeah. morals cannot be legislated, but behavior can be regulated. The law cannot make an employer love me, but it can keep him from refusing to hire me because of the color of my skin. That is the quote she has been yes. alluding to when she's talked about. I think that's a perfect way to end this segment. Again, Angela's been a friend of the show, joining Thank us quite are. a bit during the pandemic, and honored to have you on our team. Thank you First all of so many great. appearances. Thank yes. you. Yes, yes. Thank you for being with us. I know you have things to do now. We'll keep it rolling.